Welcome to another episode of In Your Business. Today we're going to meet with another entrepreneur that's very unique to our community. Each entrepreneur brings a separate set of skills and developments for our community. And today Brandon Searcy is going to work with us, talk to us, educate us on what it is that he does. But it's kind of fun for me because I've been a part of what Brandon Searcy has done for the last several years from a standpoint of an educator. I've been able to work with him in class and, and get to know him as an individual and now get to see some of his best traits being put to work in entrepreneurship. So Brandon, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So Brandon, what I like to do on the show is I'll be getting to know about your business, but I also want to get to know about you as an entrepreneur. And I don't know if you think of yourself as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say so. I mean, that's kind of what I've always wanted to do. So um, be a businessman or entrepreneur. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So it's working out. But let's go back to your childhood when you were just a little guy. Um, did you grow up in this area? Yes. Yep. My whole life lived in Richmond. Okay. So uh, as you were growing up, what were you thinking you wanted to do? I mean, I, you know, I think everyone as a kid always has like, you want to be an astronaut or the president. That's kind of the same deal. But as I, uh, you know, I, I've always, I've always liked trying to do things like, you know, like that kid that sells lemonade or buys video games and sells them to his friends. It's kind of, kind of the stuff that I always, like, more so looking back on it, that I'm like, oh, I've always had these traits. I've always kind of done this stuff. Uh, didn't really know it at the time when I was a kid, but, it, you know, it just kind of, it's always just been kind of, you know, what I've always liked to do and enjoyed and just gravitated to it without even knowing it. So, so you were a little business person from the beginning. I suppose, yeah. So did you really do that? Did oh, yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah, I would, uh, I would uh, go to pawn shops and buy, like, 99-cent games, and I'd sell them for, like, $1.50, 2 bucks to my friends. All right. So, I mean, it's not much, but, you know, buy me candy. <laughs> as long as you were making a profit, <laughs> I think that's what's important. Exactly. So, uh, all right, so, so you go into your teenage years. You're, you were probably still doing stuff like that, making deals with your buddies. Yeah. And, and then college came along. Yes. And then, uh, and then I actually had to try to decide on what exactly I wanted to do. And like I said, in the, in the moment, I wasn't sure. I, uh, I think I switched my major probably five or six times. Um, I originally thought I wanted to do something in politics. And, uh, and then I was like, you know, I kind of did that for a little bit, worked on it. And then about probably two years into college, I thought, this isn't, this isn't really what I want to do. Uh, and then I, you know, started taking business classes, and I realized hey, this is this is what I enjoy, um, you know, numbers, analyzing things, problem solving, uh, dealing with people, uh, you know, collaborating, working as a team towards something, um, you know, and then being able to create something to grow it into something much larger. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, I've known you for several years, and when you first started college, to the time you graduated to now, and I've watched you grow. And uh, as a business person, you've grown well, okay? Um, well, you've always you. been a lot of fun to have around, but now how you're applying it really just makes it amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, college can teach you a lot of stuff, and, you know, it's just like with anything, I think, in life, you don't really know what you're getting into until you're in there. You know, just like anything, any major thing, you know, having kids or, or you know, starting a business, anything like that, you can have it all in your head, kind of what you think it's going to be like, and, and people can, you can read all the books and learn all the stuff, but until you take that dive and get in there and do it, it's like your eyes are, are opened and you're like, man, there's a lot more to this than anybody can really tell you. Okay, so let's make that dive. Let's, let's dive now into your business. So tell us, what are you doing? So uh, I have a company. Um, I have a business partner as well. We have it. Uh, we I own the company 50/50 with him. Um, we have a location here in Richmond, Indiana, and then we have a Richmond or we have a location in Houston, Texas. And uh, what we do is we buy, we purchase uh, metal. The company is called Endurance Metals. Uh, we purchase metal, and uh, it's damaged uh, coils or sheets, um, pr primarily stainless. Uh, we deal a little bit in aluminum and some other. Um, metals like that but uh, we purchase them they've either um, the mill whoever created it damaged it or uh, you know somebody was driving a forklift damaged it and what we do is we'll take that and repurpose it into a usable product for other vendors or for other customers of ours so um, so basically you know we we go around um, you know and try to uh, purchase this stuff and and uh, make it a win-win for everyone you know so if I understand it, and I think I do, um, 
what you do is you you purchase from some companies and you're mm -hmm. reselling to other companies. Mm -hmm. So you're basically having to go out and find people you can buy from. Yeah. And then turn around and find people you can sell to. Absolutely. So so you know a lot of times, um, a lot of times these damaged coils nobody really wants them because they're they're damaged and unless you have the machines and uh, you know the capabilities of repurposing them into a usable product uh, for customers then you know they're kind of stuck with it so you know um, obviously we're not buying them at you know top dollar but these people you know a lot of times they'll sit on their books for a long time because it's just you know nobody wants to take a loss on it and nobody you know you can't find anybody to buy it so you kind of have to go out and for our business you have to kind of make a sale on both sides you have to try to convince them to let you buy this metal from them uh, at a you know not at the prime rate and then you also have to you know convince your customers to to you know purchase it from you sure so um, and you know it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of communication and making it you know um, I guess the making it as pain-free for everyone so you know certain customers want it packaged up or, or, or you know done this way uh, you try to meet those needs and then you know other cut and then some of the vendors that you purchase from they want you know they want payments on you know it, sometimes cash in advance sometimes net 30 just depends on you know what they want and what and you try to you know be as be as accommodating as possible you know the you know you want it to be as pain free and and you want them you know the it, most people that we deal with they get these all the time I mean it, it just is something that happens you know um, so you want them to call you the next time that they have, you know, something like that. So when you're purchasing these coils, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and you purchase more than coils, metals. Yep. Where do you go to purchase? It's not just here in the local area. Oh no, uh, I mean we purchase all over. I mean uh, we purchase in uh, Tennessee. Um, we purchase out of you know Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago. Uh, Pittsburgh, um, the, I mean, everywhere around here that you, you know, uh, those are just a couple. And then uh, those are the major cities. And you got a lot of low, like, you know, smaller towns, like uh, cities like Richmond that have a plant, something like that. Um, so, you know, Richmond is a great area for that. I mean, we're uh, three hours and 30 minutes from Detroit, about three hours, 30 minutes from Cleveland, four and a half hours from Chicago. I mean, it's really great for, um, you know, freighting stuff in and and uh, being pretty local. So, so then basically, you go say, t say you go to Tennessee, mm -hmm. you make a purchase, then you have the stuff shipped here. Yes, yeah. So it's shipped to your facility here in mm -hmm. Richmond. Then you use your machinery then to to repurpose, repurpose it. Repurpose it. And then it's shipped back out of here to wherever you sell it to. Yep. And yep. do you typically sell it local, or do you sell it? No, we don't sell any of it local. I mean, it's a, kind of the same deal. We sell to places in Tennessee, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, just all over. Um, so uh, locally, you know, um, we're not doing much purchasing and sales, but uh, obviously employing local people and, um, you know, helping the economy in that way. You're doing a lot of selling. You're doing selling on both sides, mm -hmm. and a lot of just building relationships and making things happen. So yep. uh, that's, that's that's great. Let's talk about the employees. How many employees do you have? Uh, eleven right okay. now. So you have eleven employees currently working for you. I know you and I sp spoke a little bit earlier, and you have some possible growth opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you'll be adding more employees. We hope. Yep. Yep. Uh, working on. Uh, we run one machine. Uh, we run two shifts on, uh, looking to run two shifts on a couple other machines, um, just needing to get, you know, the personnel and um, the right people in there, you know, that's the key is, you know, I believe, um, I believe it needs to be a team effort, you know, um, those guys have my back, I have those guys back, and everyone's putting forth the, all the effort they can, um, you know, the more, the more the business grows, the more money is coming in, the better you can pay your employees, um, you know. I uh, try to, I believe the best way to do business is in win-win situations for everyone. Um, you know, incentivizing people and showing them, you know, not just saying it, but actually showing them, hey, you know, you're an asset to the company. Uh, we see this and want to give you a, a bonus or give you a raise or, you know, uh, I can tell you're doing more than what your responsibilities are. Um, and we appreciate that. Sure, you know? sure. So, so Brandon, you've not been out of school that long. 
No. Okay. You're young. Absolutely. And, and in this industry, to be able to do as much as you're doing, you know, you're building networks across the U.S. and all these other states that you're buying and selling. You have all the responsibility of these employees, 11 mm -hmm. employees. Yep. To have that many employees that you're responsible for that early out of college and, and at your age, that's that's a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's one thing that, that is a... Uh, that's uh, you don't one of the things I was saying you don't realize until you're you dive in and you are an entrepreneur but these guys you know my employees talk to me all the time about different things you know getting um, you know getting loans for cars and you know supporting their family and going on vacations and all that stuff and like you know it's you know you gotta keep the doors open and keep it running and keep it growing that way these people's way of life you know doesn't change and uh, can grow as your company grows and your way of life can grow and uh, you know, like I said, be uh, you know a good situation for everyone. Yeah, I couldn't be happier with where you're at from a standpoint that several a few years ago, um, you were concerned about what you might make. Yeah, absolutely. And today, <laughs> when I have conversations, you're more worried about how you're going to pay your help. Mm -hmm. And and so I know that you make sure they get paid. No, absolutely. I mean, it, at the end of the day, if I didn't have them, I can't I can't run all those machines by myself. Uh, I mean. For anything, no. At the end of the day, you know, uh, an an organization that you're trying to grow into something much larger than yourself, you have to have the right people, and you have to have the people that are committed to you, and you have to be committed to them in order to, you know, loyalties kind of both ways. You know, if they're going to be loyal to you, you have to be loyal to them, and uh, and you know, um, obviously, there's sometimes where, uh, you know, you you, I mean, not every employee works out. I mean, you have times where you you try to get an employee on board and if it doesn't work out then you know sometimes you have to let those people go and it's never an easy thing but at the same time you know you also you got 11 guys if you have to let one go you have to look at the betterment of the other 10 I mean you can't let the whole everyone you know sure sure and I understand what you're saying so you, you got to continue to grow develop and be the best you can absolutely at the same time I mean that's 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 a part of it you go without paycheck to make sure they go have a paycheck. Though. Absolutely, and, yes. and that's that's difficult. But um, those are the sacrifices you make as the entrepreneur. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the, exactly like you said, if if, if uh, you know, we're we're the economy's good, everything's really good right now. But you know, it, at any moment things can change. I mean, you see that with anything, you know, new. Obviously, in my industry, uh, they just put a bunch. They've put steel tariffs uh, and aluminum tariffs and had a bunch of, you know, um, kind of has made the market just a little bit crazy, uh, given a lot of power to the domestic mills, which is kind of, you know, they can influence the price. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can be doing great one day and then in no time you can kind of be like, where did this come from? And the first thing you got to look out for is, you know, those, those guys were loyal to you when you started, when you was great and they're still there for you when it's bad and you got to make sure they're taken care of. Sure, sure. It's interesting, though, as you, as you speak of these, these shifts, because you're correct. Today you're having a great day. Tomorrow you come in, the news is price yep. changed, and, and you may not be having as great a day. Those are the same things we study in econ. Yeah. They're the same things yep. we study in business school. And the difference is you don't take them as serious until it's your business. Exactly. Yes. And, and so all those things that we study comes, comes together. And when you were in school, I mean, you had to write a business plan. Mm -hmm. You had to you had to do several things for accounting and finance. You had to have your management. You had to have all those things. As you were taking them as a student, some of them you've enjoyed, some of them maybe not so much. Some of them you might even thought, "Why do I have to do it?" Yes. Yeah. But now they start to make sense. Yeah, I mean that's the uh, that's kind of like the same thing I was talking to you just a little bit ago about the you know when I was a kid looking back realizing hey I've always had these traits. It's kind of the same deal as is you know you get in there and uh, you know, when it's in, uh, you know, a classroom, um, you're, everything's a, a, a theory or, uh, you know, a, an idea there, you know, it's all, it's not real. It's a case study. It's yeah. a case study. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, so, you know, you, you, you talk, you, you might have on here, Joe and, and Barbara and so and so, but those people aren't real people to you. Right. You don't know right. them. You don't see them every day. And then you know, um, and you, 
you see, oh, you sold uh, $100,000 worth of stuff, or you bought $100,000 worth of stuff, it's all make-believe money, you know? Right, so right. then when you start dealing with real money and you have real stuff on the line and real employees to take care of, uh, that stuff it starts, you know, you start thinking again about it and you're like, man, that stuff was, that stuff was, you know, it's real. That stuff actually, uh, you know, you learn something from it. Sure. Uh, even if you didn't take it as serious when you were in school. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's great, though, that, to see you learning all this stuff. And it, and it is. It is exactly what it is. And it's, it's a great opportunity you're having. What I want to know is what's the greatest reward you're receiving in entrepreneurship? Um, I think, like I hit on earlier about creating something and growing it to be much bigger than yourself. Um, when we started, we were in one location in Houston. Um, we didn't actually even have a facility. We started out uh, making phone calls, uh, just brokering metal, uh, just selling um, metal. We'd get metal, you know, uh, da it's still damaged coil, still secondary metal, but we would purchase it and sell it to somebody else who is, who would, uh, who could use it. It didn't matter that much about repurposing it. Um, then we saw, you know, then you kind of, you see patterns and see different things. And, uh, and you're like, oh, I think there might be a niche here. I think people might, you know, if you can take these coils and not make them as damaged or change them, then they can use them. They just can't get it in the, in the way they are right now. So then, you know, you start doing research, figuring it out. And then just seeing, you know, um, when we started, we had uh, one machine and it was, me operating it and I hired a guy to help me and uh, and that was it for you know a couple months and uh, and then all of a sudden that started taking off and you know then uh, another machine later and another machine later and uh, a couple machines later then all of a sudden you're like wow um, this is this is where did all this stuff come from sure you know you're like how did this you just kind of some days you know I've I've walked in to the shop and I'm looking around and I'm just like, man, you, you, you get, every day is so busy that sometimes you don't sit there and look around and think, wow, this is grown a lot. You know, you just, sure. it's just, you know, um, and it's not overnight by any means. It's just every day you're doing the same thing as growing it incrementally a little by little. Uh, you don't notice all of a sudden that you're, you're taking up this much space. You have this many employees. Things are really starting to go um, and I think that's the most rewarding is when you stop and kind of take a look at what's going on around you you know so you, you take look back you know, yeah yeah you kind of take yourself out of uh, you know every day you just you wake up in the morning and just go 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 is you know it's stressful and uh, you just got a hundred things to get done and only you know 24 hours to get it done so um, and really even less because most of the times you got to deal with other vendors and they close their doors at five so you got to get all that stuff figured out and so you know it's sometimes it's just you don't take that break to look around and and see where you're at and see what's what's evolved sure, you know sure well that's great but so along the same lines it's the opposite okay so i know what the greatest rewards have been for you now let's look at it as a surprise or a challenge what's been a great challenge for you Oh, there's a couple. Um, one of them's been where you, uh, there's, I would say that there's two that are, that have been challenging. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not big enough to be able to purchase brand new machinery. Mm -hmm. It's extremely expensive. Um, but, uh, I purchase used machinery, uh, like anything with like a used car or something like that, they break down. Um, and until you kind of, you know, you might buy a used car and then you got to fix it up and get it all working right. Same deal goes with used machinery. You buy it, you got a lot of little issues, you kind of got to work them out and it takes months. I mean, you got, I probably, before I have a machine really ironed out, probably takes about anywhere between three to six months, you know, just because there's so much to it and you really got to, you know, replace parts and figure out what's it, you know, you don't know. A lot of these machines are from like 1960, something like that. So. You don't know that if uh, you know that motor is about to go out and all that stuff until you really had it for a minute and kind of you know can kind of see what's what's going on with it. So one of the biggest frustrations and hardest things is is f 
feeling, you know, growing and feeling really trying to fill orders and get all this stuff and then having major setbacks because of machine issues and different things like that. And then the other is, um, the other is uh, dealing with the not so good employees. Um, you know, it's like I said before, it's never an easy thing when you have somebody who's not basically being a team player or they think they're being a team player and in reality they're bringing a lot of other people, you know, um, they're hurting the team but they sure. just don't realize it. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's just, it's just hard because you can tell when you're talking to them that, you know, they don't see that they're doing anything wrong yet, you know, they're not meeting expectations. Sure. And so, sure. That, you know, it's, that's difficult. Okay. Brandon, I want you to think about this, though, for a moment before you answer. Every entrepreneur I bring on the show, I ask them about their hours. And your hours, I mean, they include everything from when you're thinking about the business, doing the business, traveling for the business, everything. How many hours do you think you're putting in a week? Um, honestly, I'll probably put in about just thinking about the business, working on the business, being in the shop, uh, I would say I put anywhere between 90 to 115 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I usually, I have guys in there, uh, one, like, one individual employee, I'll ha I have them in there about 68 hours a week. Um, I'm probably actually in the shop, uh, I'd say anywhere between, I'd probably say about 60 hours a week I'm in the shop. And then um, a lot of times I do a lot of work at home because when you're in the shop, uh, there's a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, if s sometimes, you know, you'll have employees have a question or, or you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you just, anything, you got, it's a loud environment, any noises like that, you know, you just, you go out and check on things. It's just a lot of times you can break your train of thought and go out there. So uh, then the rest of the time I work at home just is quieter okay. um, or I'm on the road. Now, I have to say, some people watching this show is going to say, what is this guy doing teaching these entrepreneurs to work 100 hours a week? Honestly, when you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't feel like work. No, it's not. It's not it doesn't feel like work. I mean, uh, because it's, uh, it's enjoying, you know, it's, a, it's like, um, you know, it would be like loving golf and being a pro golfer. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, loving basketball and being a pro basketball player. You might practice basketball 100 hours a week but you love basketball so you know so it doesn't seem like work no it doesn't yeah. seem like work it's yeah. exactly like that you know I, I i love doing business i love you know uh the problem solving and all the stuff that we hit on earlier i mean all that stuff i uh, you know i enjoy so um you know brainstorming and thinking in my head and and working on new systems and and figuring out the best way to do inventory and the best way to do all that stuff and uh you know getting a new accounts all that stuff is fun and you have a life outside of there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it's not just that. I, I, I you know, um, I mean, I'm getting married in October. So, I, you know, wedding planning, um, just booked my honeymoon. So, uh, you know, I got other things going on. But uh, even on vacation, I mean, yeah, still thinking about still it. Still thinking about it. Of course, <laughs> of course. Don't do it on the honeymoon, though. Oh, I know. That'll get me in trouble. But at the same time, you have real estate, too. I do have real estate as well. I got, uh, I guess, rentals here in Richmond. Um, those, uh, uh, I, I enjoy those a lot too. I mean, uh, home improvement, uh, something about, you know, those, I was in real estate before I did this and um, that's kind of how I got started with entrepreneurship and that, um, you know, there's a, uh, there's, you know, when I started, I didn't know that much about home improvement, all that kind of stuff, but it's really, um, it's really cool learning something and then you know my first house I ever bought I gutted the whole kitchen and remodeled the whole thing uh, with me and my my father helped me and then uh, my fiance's father helped me and um, and I mean it was just rewarding seeing it at the end you know like I said it's kind of the same deal I, I you know you you build it you put the tile down you put the cabinets in you put the countertop you get the appliances in, and then and then it's just enjoy it. there's enjoyment there when you're done and just like I said earlier you stand back and you're like man I've put hours and hours and hours of work into this 
and this is the final result. This is where it's at, and it comes out, and it looks great. And it, and you're like, I've, you know, it's just rewarding knowing that you created that and built that, and you know, that's your work. Well, Brandon, I have to tell you that um, you do that in the metal business, you do that in the real estate business, and I do that at the university. Yeah. And you're you're the same. And and so my product is the student. And so when you go out and do the things you're doing, that's when I see my reward. So uh, you're doing a great job. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, Thank uh, you. Brandon, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. So, thanks for having me. This concludes another episode of In Your Business. Today we met with Brandon Searcy. Brandon is a former student of mine. Uh, when I met him, I had no idea he'd be an entrepreneur. Even when he graduated, I wasn't 100% sure. I knew he was interested in real estate. But if you really pay attention to what Brandon's doing, he is really trying to help people. Um, he's, he's really, a, a, I guess, a people person from a standpoint that he cares for others more than he may provide for himself, okay? He cares for himself, but at the same time, he's there to make sure that his employees are taken care of. When he got into real estate, I know he was talking to me about flipping a house, and instead he held the house. And he cares more about those individuals that are living in those properties, making sure he provides a place for them to stay that's, that's well-maintained. And now, as he has his metal business, he continues to grow and develop and have more employees. And he's worried about them. He's taking care of them. And so he truly is creating something in our community that takes care of others. And that's a great entrepreneur. Thank you again for watching In Your Business.